Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? The Saints, they head up to uh, Meadowlands. They'll face the New York Giants. Um, because it's on the schedule and they kind of have to, I guess, really the, the intrigue isn't mainly around the games anymore with the New Orleans Saints. It's, it's around big picture. But we're going to talk about both uh, here with Mike Triplett of NewOrleans.Football. You can get him on Twitter at Mike Triplett. Joins us every Thursday here on AFR and with us again. Mike, we appreciate the time. Uh, as always, how are you? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Absolutely. Thanks for making the time, as always. Um you know, I, I'm kind of going back and forth if I want to start big picture or the game. I think I'm going to lean with, with the big picture. And obviously, the report from Jeremy Fowler of ESPN about Mickey Loomis likely remaining the Saints GM shouldn't come as a big surprise. I mean, I think everyone knows Mickey's connection with the, the organization and, and things of that nature. What what I'm more interested in from you is, is kind of a take on, look, there's a lot of people that wanted change there. And again, the door's not obviously closed, but likely to remain what does that kind of say about the future and the direction of the Saints franchise? Yeah, I'm really curious to see how they approach things. Um, and, and, you know, even if he's a part of it, uh, when I had a chance to sit down with him after they fired Dennis Allen, I asked if he would consider, you know, his role changing so maybe they could bring in an executive or a coach who wanted to ha work with his own GM or a coach who wanted to have his own GM powers. I mean, that could include... Bill Belichick or Mike Brabel, or that could include trying to copy what, what's going on in Detroit with Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes coming in together. You know, does he take more of an ownership executive role and let a young GM kind of be groomed under him and pass the torch for the future? Uh, does he completely retire? Um, you know, all, all those things are possible when you consider his age and how long he's been here and that this is a good opportunity to bring talent. In, in not only as a coach, but as a whole structure for a team that needs change and needs rebuilding. So he said everything is on the table and everything would be considered. I don't think he's planning to retire. I don't think he's going to be fired. But I am curious to see if the overall structure could change for, for you know the long-term future of the team. Do you think one of those scenarios in the change of the structure, I mean, you just went through a lot of, do you think one of them might be more likely than, than the other? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I think the most likely scenario is still he remains the GM, uh, and hires a coach that reports to him. That is the most likely scenario. I mean, the day that, that Dennis Allen left, I, you know, put out my prediction that said like Aaron Glenn would be the front runner for a number of reasons. Obviously there's familiarity with Aaron Glenn, but also he's coming from a program that's doing things right right now and a model that you would like to follow. But would I be shocked if, if you know, they also brought in a young personnel person and he goes uh, into a president role? I mean, it kind of reminds me of the David Griffin, Trajan Langdon yeah. structure that we saw just across the parking lot. I, I would not be shocked if they considered something like that. Not, not at all. We certainly interesting times. I mean, every, again, the, the big picture is what so much of the focus is on, obviously, at this point. But I kind of do want to – this question's kind of in, in two veins here, Mike, because, I mean – Man, you have Dennis Allen fired. Darren Rizzi comes in, lights a fire under the team. They win two straight games, go into their bye, and everybody's like, okay, wait a minute, hold on a second. What? How are we really supposed to feel about this? Now they come off the bye, lose to the Rams in disappointing fashion. What? How are we supposed to feel about this team now going forward? Yeah, we you know I just did uh, our members only podcast uh, uh, that we do each week with with uh, Kevin Washington today, and and we were kind of talking about we do a stock watch like stock up, stock down every week, and and you know technically Darren Rizzi's stock went down from when he was the two and zero interim coach to the two and one interim coach, but I don't think this did like severe damage to to all the good vibes he brought in, to, to the reputation, you know, that, that he developed for himself. Um, if they go and beat the Giants as they're supposed to and then come back and beat the Commanders at home, you know, and, and he's 4-1, and one, you know, I mean, that, that could all still exist. You know, I don't think the team's spirit is broken yet after one loss. Um, so it, one loss alone didn't, didn't completely 
evaporate all of that. But it, it, it probably means they're one loss away from that all yeah. evaporating now. I mean, he probably had the wiggle room of one or two total losses. I think he had to go seven and one or or six and two. Uh, seven and one probably would have gotten him the job, and, and six and two would probably make it about a fifty fifty proposition. So he's going to need a signature win. Losing by a touchdown in the in the final minutes when you got to the red zone against the Rams, uh, there's not a ton of shame in that. Uh, they were supposed to lose the game, and it was super close. They're leading at halftime, so um, that alone is not going to undo all all the you know all the goodwill he'll. he'll he built up, but he's going to have to win one. He's not supposed to win at some point. It's going to have to come against Washington or green Bay. Um, if he just goes out and beats bad teams and loses to good teams and finishes five and three as the interim coach, then, then I, I think he probably will not be the next head coach. All right. Well, their opportunity to get back on the right track is Sunday against the giants. Let's touch on that for a little bit here. Uh, start kind of with the practice report today. I saw Cesar Ruiz uh, back at practice. That's obviously good news. For the Saints, uh, was out with the concussion, but obviously, I would imagine there's still some protocol that he has to go through. But being on the field's a good yeah. thing. What what can you uh, what's the latest you can tell us on Ruiz? Yeah, I mean the way Darren Rizzi described it yesterday, he said he had already gotten through a few stages of the concussion protocol early in the week. Getting on the practice field is obviously a big one. You have to then feel good and and not have any um, um, you know symptoms you know from after practice and and you know. Uh, that's the next stage of the protocol. So his clearance wouldn't come quite yet, but this is this is a valuable step along that process, which which hopefully uh, signifies that that he won't miss any games if he doesn't have any setbacks. And if he plays, and Eric McCoy and Lucas Patrick play, we've seen them out of practice too. It'd be the first time since week three that they have their full starting offensive line. That would obviously be huge for this team. And they you know lost Taysom Hill, but do still have Alvin Kamara. They're going to get Kendra Miller back. There's a chance that their run game could do really well, and this is this is a matchup where you want to lean on your run game. You're hoping you're playing with a lead in a game against a team like this. Uh, what, you know, you could take weather out of the equation if you can run the ball. And New York has a lousy run defense, um, so for a number of reasons, um, this would be a good week for for them to have a fully intact offensive line and, and rely heavily on the run game. Week three, my goodness, yeah. I mean, I knew it had been a while. <laughs> Those uh, are better days. <laughs> yeah, that just that really puts it all into perspective there, uh, Mike. And yes, you're right. Run game could be huge, especially with no Dexter Lawrence on the other side for the Giants. But yep. you brought up yep. Taysom Hill, and I did want to touch on that. Look, I mean, if there's been one narrative that stood out most with this Saints offense, it's been when Taysom Hill's been out there, they've been really good. When he hasn't, they seem to have fallen yeah. off of a cliff. How do they avoid that here down the stretch with no more Taysom for yeah, the rest of the year? I'm not 100% sure it's a direct correlation. Um, I think Eric McCoy's been a direct correlation, yeah. and they happen to miss a lot of games together. Um, there there have been a couple games where, where the you know, the run game has really been good dating back to, and it was the game where Taysom Hill came back, dating, dating back to when they went uh, out to L.A. and played the Chargers, even when they played the Panthers and, and lost those two games. The run game had been pretty good. It was really good in this game, um, uh, and that was even without Eric McCoy. So um, I do think it's still possible that they can have a really good run game, but obviously Taysom Hill helps you in so many ways. He he manipulates the defenses you're going to see based on how they decide they have to match up against you. Darren Rizzi had a really good point when he said, you see a lot more vanilla defense because – they need to remain flexible in case Taysom Hill is a fullback or a tight end or a wide receiver on every given play or the quarterback. Um, so you see more vanilla defenses when he's out there and, and obviously all the shifting and motioning they do with him. He led the team in reset or in receiving yards in this last game, yeah. even though it was only 37. So um, n- no one player can replace all that. Uh, expectation for Kendra Miller in his, uh, in, a, in a potential return. What, what do you think you see from him? Uh, I mean, the thing about him is it has been frustrating how 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 many injuries he's dealt with. Yeah. But every single time he's been healthy and played, he's flashed. And I expect him to flash again in this game, especially knowing that, you know, Darren Rizzi is going to give him that clean slate and be intent on, on giving him every chance to prove himself and, and kind of wash away all the, the negatives that have, that have uh hung out, hung over him like a black cloud uh, away, you know, kind of 
in a very different way, but similar to what we've seen with Cam Jordan. Cam Jordan was down to playing 10 snaps a game, and, and he got a clean slate. He's made the most of it. I, I think we're going to see the same type of opportunity with Kendry Miller, and when he gets opportunity, he, he usually does well with it. Chatting with Mike Triplett, New Orleans Football on Twitter, at Mike Triplett. Conversation is always brought to you by Benny's Car Wash. Uh, Mike, one more for you, and we'll get you out. Flip sides of the ball a little bit here. The Saints defense, I mean, the rush defense has just been a, an issue kind of all year for them. It reared its ugly head again in the second half against the Rams. They're facing a Giants offense now this go-round that's going to be quarterbacked by Drew Locke. How does the Saints defense kind of match up with the G-men? Yeah, hopefully this is a team they can finally stop. I, I think that's been probably the bit most disappointing aspect of this entire Saints season. The front seven hasn't dealt with a ton of injuries. Um, uh, the defensive line hasn't dealt with any injuries at all. Um, and they're just getting run through uh, like a knife through butter. It's It's been really disappointing, frustrating. Um, it was as bad as it's ever been last week. Now the Giants don't look like the kind of team that should be able to do that to you. They don't have a ton of talent at running back. Uh, their, their superstar running back is in Philadelphia now. Um, and you would hope you're playing with a lead against the Giants and they have to abandon the run. And you would hope you're putting in Drew Locke in positions where he has to win this game. But, you know, if the Giants can run the ball and, and keep Drew Locke out of third and long and keep the game close, uh, then then they take that advantage away. So it's definitely put up or shut up time for the Saints run defense. Saints and Giants, Sunday up in New York. See if the Saints can get back to their winning ways. They are a five-point favorite in the game. Mike Triplett, New Orleans. Football, always generous with his time. Mike, we appreciate it for another week, and we'll do it again soon, okay? All right, thank you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.